If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want and need more money to fund your deals, don't go anywhere. I'm getting ready to plug you into the funding, regardless of your credit, regardless of your income, regardless of your experience in real estate investing. Well, welcome to the show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and glad to have you here. If you are a first time listener or viewer, a very special welcome to you. Here on the show, we talk about all things real estate investing. Primarily, we talk about single family houses, how to find them before other real estate investors know they exist, how to get them funded. Again, regardless of your credit, not relying on banks or institutions, how to sell houses quickly in three days or less, how to automate the business. We do a lot on uh, mindset as well. And in fact, this is part two today in our series of what does the successful real estate investors mindset look like? And um, I'm going to uh, introduce my guest here on the show in just a moment. But before that, I promised you a second ago that I'm going to plug into the money. Well, how in the world am I going to do that regardless of your credit experience or verification of income? Well, coming right around the corner, I have my next <clears throat> live event called Jay Connors Real Estate uh, Cashflow Event, Cashflow Conference. And in that conference, uh, we've got the bus tour. We go out and look at houses, our houses that are uh, that, that we found, and we teach you how we found them. And I don't know another live event like it. So for the sake of time, I'm going to give you the website. You go check out everything that's going on at the live event. In fact, in just a moment, we'll talk about the live event that we just finished. Um, but go to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash all in lowercase. And we're putting it right here on the screen. jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. And that'll give you all the details about the next upcoming live event. With that, I'm excited to have back with me as a returning guest and expert, my dear friend, colleague, and also coach uh, with people on their mindset. He's a real estate investor himself for a long time. Welcome back to the show, Chaffee Wynn. Hello, Jay. Hello. <laughs> or wait a minute, Hello. Chaffee. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Chaffee. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you, Jay? <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. The weather is still nice here in eastern North Carolina, more in North Carolina. How are things up in Chicago? I assume you made it back to Chicago. I did. Had a fantastic time in North Carolina last week. Got back to 18 degree temperatures here in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm missing already. <laughs> well, I, I won't, I won't uh, shout it loud that it's uh, 74 degrees right now here in Moorhead City. But anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, and, uh, if y'all are new to Chaffee, um, we'll take a moment, let him uh, give his background in just a second. And then for the first time ever in all the episodes since we started this podcast show, we're actually bringing here to the show uh, on the video and on the audio, my executive producer, Scott Patton. Uh, I've invited him to join Chaffee and myself on this show. So welcome to being on the camera yourself there, Scott. Thanks, Jay. Hey, Chaffee. I'm excited hey. to be here, and I think we've got a great show lined up for you. Oh, there's no doubt about it. So, y'all, Scott uh, has been, been the executive producer of my show since we started, and I don't know, I've lost count of podcasts. This is episode, what, 40-something, 50-something? Yeah, we're in the 50s now. Awesome. Ooh. So um, anyway, uh, I invited Scott to come on because this topic we're going to talk about today, mindset, what's a successful person's mindset, their, their, their perspective, what's the filter that they wear, <laughs> how do they filter things coming out of their mind and stay focused and actually get things done and are successful, actually, whether you're in real estate investing or not. So you'll definitely want to share this show if you can with other folks because what we're going to cover here uh, it's regard I mean it's regardless of, of what you're wanting to accomplish but Scott is big into mindset like Chaffee is Chaffee's got a number of 
He does a business, uh, business uh, small business coaching right there in the Chicago area. And he comes to all of my live events because he's a very successful coach and helping with people and also a successful real estate investor. So, Chappie, for those that are new to the show, just take a just take a moment and give them your background. So my background, uh, just uh, back in the days I was taught to go to school, get good grades, uh, get a job. So like a lot of you out there, and that's what I did. I uh, went to school. I got good grades and uh, got a got a job. Uh, I graduated as an engineer from the University of Illinois, went to the corporate world in a Fortune 100 company, worked there for almost uh, over a decade, actually a little bit over a decade, got certified as a uh, Project Management Professional, or PMP, um, worked on multiple projects, uh, managed teams of individuals, and and then uh, realized, well, throughout that entire entire time that I was working there, that I wanted more. I, I needed to do more with my life, uh, even though I was compensated well. That wasn't what I was passionate about. It wasn't what I uh, was put on this earth to do. And so, uh, during that time period, I started looking around and I fell in love and found this thing called real estate investing and started doing that and started working on my transition plan. So after a few years, uh, went into real estate investing and the rest is history. <laughs> so, yeah. <in> that show. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Scott, uh, what's your, I mean, I know nobody on this show has heard your background story. Uh, cause this is the first time you come to this side of the camera. So, um, I don't know anybody that knows Scott Patton better than Scott. So Scott, what's your, What's your background and what's your world looking like? Well, kind of like Chaffee, my dad was an accountant and he was an accountant for a grocery chain. And I ended up being a clerk for the grocery chain. And then when I graduated from university, I spent the next 20 years managing grocery stores all over Western Canada. And by the time I was about almost 40, I was looking at guys that were 10 years older than me and they were obese miserable, having nervous breakdowns and about to have heart attacks. And I thought, there, but for the love of God, go I. I'm no smarter than these people. And it's a system and it's grinding them up and it will grind me up. I could already see I was starting to put on weight and I was starting to have the same bad attitudes that they had. And I decided it was time for a change. Fortunately for me, that was at the time when computers were just starting to come along and the internet. And I started teaching people how to turn on their computer. And then they said, do you know how to make a website? And I learned that and all these things until in 2005, I learned about podcasting and I started podcasting. Since then, I've had 35 podcasts of different variations of length and, and uh, met Jay and Chaffee and was really excited to be able to work with them, sharing their message around the world through YouTube and podcasting and the other fun things that we do. And I love to travel. When I was in grade two, my parents moved to Melbourne, Australia for two years. And they tell me that on the Melbourne International Airport, there are still scratch marks as they had to pull me onto the plane to leave Australia. And now, thanks to the internet and being able to work remotely, like I'm right now in Hawaii, been here for two weeks, have another week to go. And last year, I was all over Europe and Northern Africa. So I'm really excited that I'm able to do the work that I do and, and help people and change people's lives, yet still be able to do one of my dreams, which is to travel the world and experience different cultures, as opposed to just being a tourist, actually like living somewhere for a month or two and, and experiencing it as the people living there experience it. That is awesome, Scott. In fact, I remember when I first met you, and we were introduced to each other by a mutual friend. And I heard that part of your story and I went, wow, I've heard of people like you. <laughs> yeah, we, we do exist. <laughs> <laughs> but to travel the world and have that passion and still be able to do what you are passionate about doing. I was a guest a few minutes ago or a couple hours ago on someone else's podcast show. And, um, and we were we were talking along and they were they asked me what was I, you know, what made me unique or what was I passionate about? And, you know, for someone to do what you do, Scott, that's pretty phenomenal. So I congratulate you on living your passion, your dream. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. So let's jump into the show, folks. Let's jump into the show. Um, so this is part two of this series on mindset. 
Um, and uh, just a quick recap on what we covered in part one. And of course, Scott, you weren't in the conversation. This was just Chaffee and myself. Actually, I was interviewing Chaffee and we're going, I'm going to interview both of you. <laughs> I think we should just interview each other. You know, just, we just go around. We'll just have a, we'll have just go around. We'll just have a big round table a discuss, or a small round table. But Chaffee covered in the last, in the first show, the attributes that block success or two of the attributes that block success. And by the way, folks, uh, all viewers and listeners, if you do not listen or if you haven't yet listened to part one of this series, you definitely want to go back to part one. How many shows back is it, uh, Scott? A few? Yes, it's, it's it's the last one, but I will put the link in the description for that show specifically oh, so everyone can get it. Good, good, good. Um, but Chaffee covered some great stuff. Two of the blocks uh, that prevent success is, first of all, as Chavi pointed out, not uh, taking enough action, right? Not enough action. And he goes into all detail about that. Uh, so go back to the podcast and listen to it. The other block was uh, not completing tasks. So starting a project, but not following through and, and completing it. And then Chavi talked about some of the top traits for success. And one was understanding your why or what your purpose is, and how that really is the foundation and the fuel that drives you. you dug deep into that. Also, the top trade he covered was you got to have a burning desire and a passion to achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. And then how do you keep yourself in the right mindset, Chaffee talked about, once you have it. Uh, he also talked about always do activities that move you towards your goals. All right, We're going to talk more about that here on this show called shiny object syndrome. Um, and what you're doing is at the highest and best use of your time. I remember I talked about that some. Uh, and what will make you the most money in the shortest amount of time. So all that is covered in detail on that show. Be sure and go check it out. Um, but Chaffee, before we actually get into the meat and potatoes of this show, um, let's share with the viewers and listeners what we just finished up last week. My lands did we have an exciting week last week. Tell them what we did. Well, we had your boot camp, Jay. We had the live boot camp uh, at the event, and uh, we had a bunch of people fly in to uh, Emerald Island, North Carolina, right down the street from you, and had a fantastic time. And uh, you got to go through all your systems and courses and, and really help people move forward with things. Yeah, it was really exciting. In fact, um, the least number of people we had, I mean, the least number we had from North Carolina was like almost a record. <laughs> we had some people from North Carolina, but we had just as many, if not more, from all across the nation. I mean, the West Coast, Arizona. Um, Hawaii. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. We had a couple right. fly in all the way. Scott, you're in Hawaii <laughs> right now. We had, uh, we had a couple fly in to Emerald Isle, North Carolina, from Hawaii, to come learn about how we do real estate investing. How about that? That is awesome. And I'll tell you, there's lots of properties here that uh, that you could be yes. investing in. Yes, he told me he told me about his uh, properties that he invests in in Hawaii and the price of property. And that's another <laughs> world out there, brother. Let me tell you, as you already know. <laughs> So, yeah, so the live event was fantastic. Uh, after the live event last week, we had uh, uh, the Mastermind, uh, which uh, uh, Chaffee and I together run this Mastermind group. We meet four times a year. And um, really, uh, I was able to bring some fantastic resources to the Mastermind, new places to find motivated sellers, and et cetera, how to automate your business. But the mastermind. Well, Chavi, just take a second and then we'll jump in. Tell them what a mastermind is. I mean, what's the purpose of a mastermind group anyway? So the mastermind that we have uh, that you run, Jay, is a small group of individuals. So it's not uh, 100 or 200 or 300 people. We're in a small group. Um, we're together for two full days and we share resources and we do this thing called Hot Seats where we really get to break down somebody's business and sometimes even their life, what's going on with their life and, and uh, their personal situation, and really see how we can help out. So 
it's a it's a give and it's a take. So a lot of uh, the students there are helping out and offering advice, and obviously you and I are there um, injecting uh, some advice and, and information as well. And we really get to share with each other and really form a family bond. I believe um, yep. where we're really there supporting each other and and seeing how we can really help advance each other's businesses. Um, yeah. And the beautiful yeah. thing is that it's not just you have to do fifty deals to be part of this group. It's both beginners and and advanced investors. And it's funny, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed this mastermind uh, specifically because we did have some more advanced real estate uh, uh, investors that were struggling. And we just, we, we reminded them to go back to a beginner's mindset and go back to the basics. And that really just opened their eyes and saying, you know what, we were overcomplicating things. We were put doing too many things at once, uh, even though they were growing and advancing it brought them back to the basics. It brought them back to the foundation of what it means to be a real estate investor and to really grow your business. And that also helped the beginners there too, to really focus on what they need to do to get to that advanced level as well. So really good sharing of information there. Yeah. And you said something that's so important. Um, a really good mastermind group. Uh, everybody brings to that meeting, the giver's mindset. Mm -hmm. So, we didn't have that in our notes as to what we're going to talk about on this show. A successful mom, big part, a big, we're not going to have time to talk about in this show, but a big, big uh, attribute of a successful person is having a go giver or a giving mindset. Uh, and that's what we do with the mastermind. It's just about as much as what can you bring to the meeting, encouragement, resources, et cetera, um, along with, you know, what you can do as the uh, takeaway. So, Scott, anything before we uh, jump in on part two of the successful mindset? Uh, no, I just wish I had been there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure in comparison to Hawaii? <laughs> Actually, you know, one of the things that you reminded me, Chaffee, about was if you're not where you want to be in life, surround yourself with people that are because they will just even, even if they never say anything to you, just being in that energy and in that group will help you move towards your goals. And being in groups can be really, really powerful. And uh, I've had some experiences where I've just sort of found myself in these groups that are doing stuff that I think is really cool. And the next thing you know is I'm finding myself doing the same thing they're doing, even though really what, I mean, we were talking about shiny object syndrome. This was one and still is one. But it was just amazing to me. It's like there, this one friend of mine decided to do a TED Talk, and he did it two days ago, three days ago on Saturday in the Philippines. And he brought me into the group that was supporting him on his TED Talk. And what do you think I was doing for three days was every once in a while I get out my notebook and I'm writing points for my TED Talk, and I've never really actually seriously thought about doing a TED Talk before. And and so the power of the group is something I think many, many people uh, underestimate. So the people that show up in your mastermind and in your other groups that you put together, because I know there are more than just one, the, the power is, yeah, we're getting this great information, but the superpower is you're with a whole bunch of people that have the same beliefs and same goals as you do, and you're heading in the same direction. And you can stop one person walking down the street, but you can't stop a thousand. And that's what you're creating when you're creating these masterminds. Yeah. I tell you, Scott, uh, what you just said reminded me of what a mentor of mine years ago told me, and I'll never forget it. He says, Jay, and this is a writer downer. We should put this in the show notes. Okay. He said, Jay, when it comes to money, the more you waller in it, the more sticks to you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the mastermind is another opportunity to waller in a lot of money so you can get some more sticking to you. Is that, a, is that an official word, Jay, waller? <laughs> yeah, I think it's W-A-L-L-E-R. I think, I'm not sure. It's sort of like we say here in uh, Eastern North Carolina, down east, uh, we'll go, my Lord, honey, ain't I been moment tonight? Moment, M-O-M-I-C-K. <laughs> ED, moment. Context tells you what moment is. So, anyway, oh, I just handed this, Champion Scott, hot off the press, just handed this 
right here, hot off the press. Brenda Smith, my office manager, just brought it in here to me. This is from uh, Clayton, who attended the live event just this past week. He said, greetings, and he's got my name and my team members' names. He says, he says I have your where to get the money now system, and I went to your live event last week. After the first day of your live event, it was crystal clear to me how to go about locating private lenders and gaining money to fund my deals. Driving home, driving home, I set three appointments. My first appointment was yesterday. I'm glad to say I already have $200,000 in new funding. Wow. I can attest that you and your team really care about your students and provide the tools for us to be successful. Thank you for your live event and your where to get the money now system. Look forward to continuing to grow my business with you. Kindest regards, Clayton. How about that? So that's nice to hear. Beautiful. All right, that's let's great. jump in. Let's jump in. We've kept these viewers and listeners waiting long enough for part two. So one thing we talked about before the show that we thought would be a really, really, really important topic for us to talk about as relates to the successful mindset. And that is, let's talk about the shiny object syndrome or the shiny penny syndrome. So before we started the show, the three of us were bantering around. In fact, it was right there, Scott. I said, man, Scott, we got to have you on the show, you know, with, with your insight. And, um, and the, so the first question I asked us, I mean, I forget how we started talking about shiny object other than when you're a successful entrepreneur or successful period with your mindset, um, you got to know how to deal with the shiny objects. OK, and we're talking shiny objects, whether it's something you're considering doing or if you get into real estate investing. Well, as you said, Scott, well, tell the viewers and listeners, what do you say about shiny objects? as relates to real estate investing. There's just not these, these things out here that grab our attention, but you also said something else that was very insightful. Well, most of the time when you're talking about shiny objects, it's, oh, look at this. I want to get this brand new TV or I want to get this new car. Or in if you're an entrepreneur, it's, oh, here's the latest Facebook ad program I want to learn or it just goes on and on. And these are all just usually distractions from actually focusing on your business. And if you're not focused, of course, your energy just gets scattered all over the place. However, when you're a real estate investor, you're, what are you looking for when you're looking for something to invest? It's really a shiny object, right? It maybe it's got dust on it and dirt and it's been in the mud, but what you do is you pull it out you shine it up and you make it look really good. And then you sell it to somebody else. So, uh, you can take advantage of your desire for or our innate desire for shiny objects by focusing it on the shiny objects that's going to help your business versus focusing on things that are going to take your energy and scatter it all over the place. But every house that you look at is a shiny object because you're looking at it and you're thinking, okay, I can, you know, if I buy it and I do this and I do this and I do this, oh my God, I'm going to make a ton of money. And you said something really uh, insightful, I thought, Jay, when it came to how do you make sure that the shiny object that you actually invest in is a golden shiny object versus a fool's golden shiny object, <laughs> fool's gold versus yeah, a real gold. yeah, exactly. So, so, so before I answer the question, that really that's really a two part question. One is how do we manage the shiny objects that are all out here everywhere, all these different opportunities. And as you just said, how do we how do we decide which shiny objects of real estate opportunities that we want to take advantage of? And it's simple. There's the good news. It's simple, simple to answer this question. And that is, and folks, if you're taking notes, write this down. Scott, we for sure want to put this in the show notes. And that is, let the math make the decision as to which deals you do. And of course, within the business itself, as to which opportunities you take advantage of. I mean, is but we'll get to that in a second. So as far as choosing the deals, you see, a shiny object is not a shiny object unless there is emotion involved. Emotion. I mean, there's nothing twinkling or getting my attention unless there's some emotional payoff that I perceive that I'm going to get. 
I mean, we get right down in Chaffee, you know, I've heard you say this. I mean, people, every decision you make, every decision you make is, is based on emotion. You justify it by logic, except you're the exception in being a successful real estate investor. And that is let the math make the decision. What do I mean by that? Stick to the formulas that I teach or the formulas or any business you're in. OK, any business you're in, let the math, the money make the decision. So, for example, when I'm buying a house with private money, which is we're paying all cash to the seller. Well, we follow the formula that you use to buy the house, which is called the maximum allowable offer formula. All right. So, Scott, we should put this in the notes. What's the formula to use when paying all cash, whether it's your own cash or with private money? And the formula is you take the after repaired value of the property, multiply it times 70 percent. That's taking into account your profit. Subtract the repairs, the estimated repairs, and that gives you your maximum allowable offer. So if so, if 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 the property does not line up with the formula, it's a pass. You see, one of uh, one common uh, mistake that new students make, new real estate investors make. Um, but not new students if they follow what we teach, but new real estate investors at large, the mistake they make is letting the emotions become involved as to whether it's a deal that I should even do. Okay. I was guilty of that when I started 15 years ago. So stick to the math. So let's come back around, uh, Chaffee. One thing that I asked all three of us, I was asking myself, so, uh, and we didn't hear all the answers. The first thing I said, Chevy, and I, and I found this uh, interesting uh, when you answered it before we went live. I said, why do we have, oh, yeah, I was talking about shiny objects. And Scott, you said, I have it. I have it. I have it. I said, why do we have it? You said, I don't know why I have it. I just have it. I have shiny object. You know, Scott is mommoked with shiny objects, right? So, I know, definitely am. Yep. So I said, well, Scott, why do you and I have shiny object? And I said, Chappy, he ain't got shiny object. He's an engineer, right? So what was your comment to that, Chappy? My, my comment was I have it. <laughs> <laughs> I have it too. <laughs> yeah, but you have it for a different reason. <laughs> well, I, I, you well, know, again, I, you said you have to know everything. Well, yeah. I mean, I think most success, the most successful individuals I know are somewhat ADD and they, they have the biggest shiny syndrome, shiny object syndrome out there. So um, successful people have, I think everybody has shiny object syndrome. It's just, as you said, Jay, it's how do you control it? How do you manage it? Like, what, what do you process? And unfortunately, a lot of individuals that aren't successful, they tend to jump, 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 jump without managing that desire, right? Well, you had, I thought you really had, well, I didn't think, I mean, you, you had some very insightful comments that I want the viewers and listeners to hear and, and, and hear you say. So why do, um, why do, why do people have shiny object syndrome period? Well, I mean, I'm talking whether they're successful or they're not successful. What, why do we have this syndrome? And then tell us then what, then what differentiates the person that just keeps getting and getting and getting and getting, stuff and then not getting anything done. So for, for a lot of engineers and uh, accountants and numbers people, analytical people, we have shiny object syndrome for the simple fact of we need to know everything. We want to know all the facts, all the details, all the information. So that what, what that actually does is that it causes us to buy a lot of things, study everything, uh, look into information, and then end up in this position we call analysis paralysis, where we're overanalyzing things and we're not making progress because we're analyzing the heck out of it. And if we don't have something that we don't know, we got to buy something else or look for more information so that we can have the best possible solution. And before you know it, we looked at one deal for three weeks and it's actually already off the market because somebody already bought it in that three week time period. Right? So, so, so are you saying when you began as a new real estate investor, what year did you do your first deal? Uh, I started, I did my first deal in 2003. I started in 2002 though. So, 
there was a research period. <laughs> research period. So are you saying that you like went to all these different seminars and conferences and and invested in home study systems? Uh, is that what you did? Uh, yeah, I got like bookshelves full of them. I got like a cab, a couple few cabinets full of them. I got boxes in the basement full of courses. So I spent a significant amount of money on training and education. <laughs> right. If you had it to do all over again, what would you have done differently? You know, first and foremost, I would choose a a somebody that I found that was successful and did what they told me to do. You know, it's it's one of those take the filters off, find a mentor, find a coach, find somebody that's been there, done that, and just let them. It's kind of like an internship or uh, back in the days of apprenticeships, right? Find somebody that's going to teach you and train you versus figuring everything out yourself. And what a lot of us did back in the day was that we piecemealed everything together, right? So. Um, you know, if I wanted to learn how to do short sales, that was one course. If I wanted wholesales, it was another course with another instructor. And then I wanted to do, you know, lease options was another instructor. And then rehabbing was another instructor. And so you bought all these little individual pieces and then you attempted to make a Frankenstein system that worked for you. And, and when in reality, you just spent a lot of money that you didn't need to spend. You spent a lot of time and energy that you didn't need to spend. Had you just chosen somebody that kind of resonates with you and done what they told you to do, you, you would have been a lot more successful, a lot faster. Yeah. So, um, Scott, why do you have Shani? Why you got Shani Ivan syndrome? I, I want to just add one thing that I thought of when Chaffee was speaking, and that is it doesn't mean that you don't read books or you don't take courses, but what it does mean is, is that the person that you're working with and mentoring you, is mentoring you is saying, okay, Chaffee, you want to do this? Great. Here are some resources. It's it's faster and easier for you to go and read them than to spend 12 hours with me going over this sort of basic information. And and that maybe they don't do that too. I'm just saying that we're not saying don't educate, but we're saying make sure that you're getting the right education. And you actually reminded me of when I first learned how to make web pages. And I did it by sitting beside a guy who was making web pages. I never read a book, never watched a video. I mean, it was 2000, so there probably wasn't a book and there was certainly no videos. Uh, but I just found someone that knew how to do what I wanted to do. And I said, I'm going to help you for free for two weeks. Let me sit beside you and figure out what you're doing. I said, oh, great. You know, so that's all I did. And that's how I, that's how I learned. So exactly what you were talking about there, Chaffee. Yep. Uh, I, I'm a lifelong learner. I love learning. And so part of that means that I'm reading a lot of sales and emails that are t telling me I should buy something. And every once in a while, if it's a really well-written email and it's something that really, you know, pulls at my, my heart and my brain, I'll go, oh, yeah, like I really need to know this. And it's one of the reasons I love what I'm doing. Like, Jay, you and I are, are producing a, a, a video course and I do video courses with a lot of different people. I actually have over 100 that I've produced. And what I love about it is these are experts in areas that I usually know very little about. So all of a sudden, I'm spending two hours with an expert on some topic that I'm interested in. Usually, I'm very interested in them. And so I'm using my shiny object syndrome to actually propel my my. Uh, my business and my projects forward because it's like, Oh, like, you know how to do this. Great. You want to do a course? Sure. And then now I get two hours with them learning how to do it. And of course, if I have a question later on, they're happy to answer it. So uh, I find it's just because I'm a lifelong learner. I love learning new things and, and exploring the world. Chaffee, what have you learned about how to manage the shiny object syndrome? Well, again, it goes back to successful people, you know, even though they have the shiny object syndrome, they learn to focus on the things that we talked about at the last podcast, um, you know, focusing on your beliefs, focusing on your passions, your desire. And really, it's about making progress, right? So, you know, I can get into the details of project management and all that kind of stuff. Only the bottom line is, are you moving forward towards what your end goal is? Or are you allowing the shiny object to distract you and pull you away from your North Star, right? Uh, is it moving you closer to your why, your reason? And are you doing the things that are going to help you 
to advance that. Or, or again, is it just another thing over here that's pulling you off the path of success? Yeah. And if there are tools that will help you, then yes, that's something you may want to explore. At the same time, you got to stay focused on the end goal. Yeah. So part of what you're saying is there is a difference between going to a conference or investing in a home study system or reading a book and actually taking action on what you learned. Absolutely. Um, do you think, do you think some people confuse the activity of learning with taking action on what they are learning? And what I mean by that question, do they think that, Hey, I'm actually, um, What's the word I'm looking for? That actually success is going to appear by me just learning this stuff. Yeah. It's and it's and, and you know, along with a shiny object, it's not just about learning, right? There's a lot of tools and systems and processes out there where they think if I buy this new tool like a CRM system or a software that's going to help me manage and track things, that that's going to move me forward. When in reality, as we learned at the mastermind. But when you stick to the basics, then you get to decide of, can I do it without these tools? Because, you know, just because you have a tool, you know, doesn't mean that it's going to help move you forward. It could really just confuse you even more because you have to learn how to use the tool and that distracts you from your purpose. So it all depends upon where you're at in your business. And are you using the right tools at the right time versus just using and grasping at everything? I think I mentioned it earlier, too. It's. You know, people tend to look for the path of least resistance. And when in reality, the path of least resistance sometimes leads you down a path you don't want to be down. And it's a distraction and it takes you away from where you want to go. Um, And so sometimes you just got to, again, focus on what's my end goal? Where am I going? What's my target? And am I moving forward towards that? And as long as you're moving forward towards that, then and keep doing those things and the things that take you away. You got to stop. You got to put aside you got to do what horses do in races, right? They put on the blinders, right? So you stick on those blinders and you focus towards where you want to go, your, your finish line. Yeah. Well, when you just said to make sure that what you are investing your time in, investing your money in, deciding what to do is really moving you forward to, I mean, moving you forward, you got to know where you're wanting to go, right? You know? Absolutely. I don't know where I'm wanting to go. I'll never know if I got there. So, yeah. um, but before we start the show, you saying this triggered, and uh, Scott will definitely want to put this in the show notes. But in fact, you may want Scott, you might want to look up the exact quote because I'm gonna paraphrase. But here's the bottom line essence of what Warren Buffett himself said. Warren Buffett said, "I've made more money in my career uh, by deciding what not to do or by deciding which projects or opportunities not to get involved in than the ones I did decide to get involved in. And I'm sure, I'm sure what he's referring to there. And again, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm sure what he's referring to there is, is not just the stocks, you know, his stocks and that, you know, that he invests in. Well, he, he decides, uh, he decides, there's a lot bigger list of stocks he does not invest in than the stocks he does invest in. So that's one way he's made a whole lot more money by not doing that big pile and by focusing on this smaller pile on here. But I'm sure that transcends all of his decisions. I mean, think about it, everybody. How many opportunities come across in front of us all the time? I mean, there's, multi-level marketing opportunities. And there's, I mean, plethora on and on and on and on of all these things. And, and, it, and when you've got the shiny object syndrome, now you've just put the average person's, you know, having opportunities come across their, their, in front of them on steroids. All right. I mean, everybody has opportunities come across, but when you have got this shiny object syndrome thing, entrepreneurs, syndrome the entrepreneur syndrome i should write a book and call it the entrepreneur syndrome anyway well we attract we attract all that stuff in because we're looking for it our blinders are off and well maybe our blinders aren't off because we know that we're looking like as real estate investors we're looking for 
new resources, new relationships, new strategies that will help elevate our business. So when here comes this new thing, you know, oh, what's that? So back to what you said, Chaffee, how do you how do you manage all that? You know, um, and I mean, if it's this shiny object opportunity that comes along over here and it's got nothing to do. I mean, no matter how exciting or intriguing it sounds like, if it doesn't line up to what to what your path is or what your goal is, then you got to, you, you know, you got to get rid of it. I mean, don't even begin it. So, so Jay, oh, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. And I'm going to throw this out there. And this is kind of a shameless plug because this is what I do. <laughs> and, and the best way really to avoid all that kind of stuff, as I said earlier, is to work with somebody, work with a coach, work with a mentor. And when a shiny object comes down the funnel, you can ask them about the shiny object and say, is this going to help me? And that coach and that that mentor is going to hold you accountable and hold your hand and say, quit looking at over there and stay focused over here. Or, yes, you can actually implement this. So, yeah, that's a tool that you need. And, and that's going to eliminate a bunch of time, energy and resources that you're going to use to, you know, investigate something that you don't need to investigate because you can just ask a question and get an answer right away and then make a decision and move forward. So I go back to working with a coach, working with a mentor, or working with somebody that's going to guide you there, take you there, that's going to help you get rid of all those shiny objects and move you forward faster. Yeah. Now, um, another thought that just came to mind is, you know, that shiny object that comes across your path that is not a fit today because it doesn't line up with your goals or where you're heading, that doesn't mean that shiny object could not be a fit at a later time. It just may not be the time for it right now. It may not be the time for it ever. But, you know, a very powerful uh, answer to give yourself on a shiny object sometimes is not now. Now's not the best time for me to employ that. Uh, uh, Scott, any comment on shiny object? Because I'm getting ready to change subjects on a very, very important subject as far as mindset goes. It's a cousin to shiny object. But have you got anything else on shiny objects, Scott? Well, as Chaffee was talking, it reminded me of a conversation I actually had with a roofer uh, last week. And there's two problems people have with money. One is making it, and the second one is keeping it. And a lot of people don't think a lot about this keeping it part. But it's kind of like when you have a lot of money, all of a sudden, that if you don't have discipline, you're going to be throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks, if I can mix my metaphors. But this person wanted to make, had a project, and it was like a CRM project, like to manage his, his uh, customers and stuff. And he spent $30,000 on a program programmer to make it, and the programmer got so far and took the $30,000 and I guess went from Hawaii to Tahiti. I don't know. They can't find him, right? And I just thought, and nobody seems at all, maybe they're over being concerned and upset and they've just written it off or whatever. But I'm thinking, like, why did you even try to do this, right? You're a roofer. You're not a programmer. You're not a programming manager type. You are you go on roofs and you bang nails. And, why, you know, like, why did you not research or get someone to research? Because there's lots of really good CRM systems and everything else. And it would maybe they cost you a hundred dollars a month instead of thirty thousand, and it was just so he did. But he had this idea, like I, I guess an inner shiny object, like I want to make this thing, and I don't mind spending thirty thousand to fifty thousand dollars on it. And he could have spent that thirty thousand dollars because there's no way that's making him money. It might make him a you know two percent more efficient or something like that, but it's not making him any money. Whereas if he'd have put it into marketing or better equipment for his crews or I mean there's a lot of things you could put 30,000 into that'll give you a house right make an investment uh, that would make you more money than trying to throw it on a program that's already you know there are a plethora of those types of programs out there so I was thinking you know it, it's until he loses all of his money he's going to continue to waste all of his money because he doesn't have the discipline to you know to like being broke is really a way of forcing yourself to be disciplined. Now I can't, you know, 
fill the car with gas or like I have to go from a Lamborghini to a Toyota or, or something, not be so extravagant because I'm not responsible, right? So that, uh, as you were talking, Chaffee, that was kind of going through my mind is, is that, you know, we can be really well off and then we can self-sabotage ourselves by going after the wrong shiny objects. Yeah. Excellent. So I want us to wrap up with one final mindset concept uh, in this series or in, the, in this show. And that is, and I learned this from a, uh, a coach of mine, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago. It became very, very valuable to me and I still use it today. And that is pruning, as in pruning a bush or pruning a tree. So I'm not a gardener. Uh, my granddaddy was a farmer. I don't know hardly anything about farming. Um, I have beautiful landscaping jobs done at our fix and flips, but I know nothing about landscaping other than I know what's beautiful. But I do know this much about farming and, uh, and gardening, and that is the concept of pruning. So each year, sometimes with some bushes and trees, you got to prune them twice a year. You cut them back, all right? So it's coming into the, the fall or the winter, and you cut that tree or bush back so that it can actually grow even more and be even bigger and grow faster and more healthy than it was. And pruning hurts. Uh, pruning is not a very you know, pleasurable activity sometimes. Pruning means on a regular basis, whatever you define that to be, depends on what business you're in, but you need to review. So we don't have, we don't have bushes and trees, but we all have branches and all of our branches is where the blood flows through the, the, the nutrients to where the fruit is on the end of those branches or are on the branches. So the fruit of our business is coming from these branches. So a branch can be an employee. A branch can be a virtual assistant. A branch can be a strategy that you're using to get motivated seller leads that you're spending money on. Uh, a branch could be an exit strategy. A branch could be a way that you fund your deals. It's any and all the different activities and people and resources and strategies and projects that you have going on in your business and your personal life. Your personal life needs pruning regularly. Okay. So what it is, is you, you take a look at everything you have going on as all that list I just did. And you ask yourself, is it still beneficial today? Am I getting a return on my investment? whether it's a person, strategy, a system, you know, should I still be working my foreclosure system today that I started 15 years ago? The answer is yes. I get a high ROI, a high return on investment. So what we as entrepreneurs have a tendency to do, not all of us, but a lot of us, have a tendency to do, and I'm included. It is my tendency. I do not like to prune, right? I don't like to fire people, okay? Um, I don't like the activity of, 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 I mean, I sort of like once things are going, you know, the tendency to set it, forget it, and what's next, right? But you got to prune. You got to prune. I mean, if, if you've got if you've got people or strategies or systems or whatever projects going on, and they are not giving you a return on your energy, your time, and your money, and your resources, you got to prune it. You got to cut it out. Okay. So, for example, no need to go into details right now, but I've been spending a lot of money for about three years on a particular aspect of Facebook marketing. Now, I still do a lot of Facebook marketing, but I've been spending a lot of money uh, at my choice. Um, on this particular aspect. Well, week before last, right before Live Event Mastermind, I pruned it because when I went back and looked at, okay, here's the money I spent on that Facebook marketing strategy. 
How many deals did I get off of it the last 12 months? Well, hello, prune the project, prune that prune. So you got to prune, you got to prune, you got to prune. Chaffee, pruning. Well, I agree. I mean, you know, as you are saying about all the different things that we have to deal with in our business and in our life, I kind of felt overwhelmed because I have all these branches. <laughs> so, so, so I would add to one, one other thing. So definitely you got to prune, you got to cut back sometimes on, you know, your branches and, and really uh, get rid of uh, some of the extra growth that's gr growing on that is uh, distracting you. And the second thing I would say is that you got to make sure you understand where your priorities are, you know, which, which are, you know, even in the tree, what are the strongest branches out there that is going to produce the most fruit? And sometimes you got to prune the branches, the smaller branches that aren't producing as much fruit. Um, right. So even though they are producing fruit, there is it, you know, a main branch? Is it a main focus? Is it a main priority? So you got to know what your priorities are. And, you know, with, with business and in life, and we hear that all the time, Jay, that uh, the people that come to the boot camp, you know, they got 10,000 things going on, or more importantly to them in their minds, you know, they got to be at work all the time and they're working 10, 15 hours a day and their business suffers. Well, they got to decide, is their business more important than their job, right? Or what's their future? What's the future growth? Um, you know, some people say, I don't have enough time to work out and they become unhealthy. Well, you know, if you're not putting your health you know, as a priority in your life, then that's going to suffer and that suffers, everything suffers. So again, you got to have the right priorities and then prune the branches that aren't, you know, supporting those main priorities, those main branches. Scott, pruning. Well, I think or, or to be more specific, have you pruned anything in the last 12 months? <laughs> Uh, a couch, a car, a house. <laughs> <laughs> I've pruned three suitcases that two of whom fell apart. Well, three, they all fell apart because uh, the traveling was too rough. Uh, yeah, minimalism for sure. So lots of pruning going on. Uh, but the thing that struck me was I was listening to both of you just now was tracking, right? Like so many times people put a lot of time and energy into something and they have no clue if it was worth it or not. And if it came out with a, even, they don't even know if it came out with a positive or negative impact. And so the, and then they're continuing to do it. And to give you an example, I have a friend who has a website. He's got millions of people on his email list and he'll send out 50,000 at a time. And he was hammering and hammering and hammering his VIP. And I'm saying to him and other friends of ours were saying to him, like, dude, you're killing your list, right? And so a couple of weeks ago, he said to me, I asked him, I said, well, how many VIPs do you have? And he's going 400. Now, keep in mind, he's been emailing these, this group he's got for three months on VIPs. So you would be thinking that he would be paying attention to it. Well, two days later, he emails me and he says, uh, Scott, I got 127 VIPs, not 400. How can you be out that much? is my question, right? If it's something you're paying attention to. So obviously he wasn't. And I would challenge everybody to what are the things you're not paying attention to? And one would be your credit card statement. You know, there are probably things that you bought four years ago that they charge you every month that you haven't looked at in three years, 11 months. And you're still paying 15 bucks or 27 bucks or 30 bucks. And because like my roofing friend, you've got enough money to cover everything. It's no problem. I'll put 500 down and pay it off or you just let it run. So I think tracking is really, really important because if you've got a, like an apple tree and you're pruning it and you cut off the four branches where 80% of your apples come from, that's a really bad job of pruning. So you need to know where the fruit is coming from and do what you can to support those things. And then the things that are wasting your money and causing rotten fruit to come, I guess, uh, you need to prune those off. But if you're not tracking and if you're not paying attention to where you're going, you know, where your money is being spent or where your energy is being placed, then you're just going to be continuing to do it and wondering why, you know, you're tired, you have no money, or you're not getting ahead. I'm so glad you said that, Scott, and brought up tracking because uh, that reminds me of a very, very successful principle, and that is I cannot improve that which I do not measure. 
So if I don't measure results, measure effectiveness, there's, it's, it's impossible for me to improve it. Um, I mean, I think of my good friends that own uh, automobile car dealerships and they spend tens and tens and tens, maybe hundreds, I don't know, thousands of dollars on television advertising. Um, very, very difficult to measure. OK. And I say, how can you do something that you can't measure? And they say, because I'm too afraid not to do it. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, yeah, uh, Chappy, comments on tracking and measuring. Oh, no, I absolutely agree with uh, everything Scott said 100%. You have to, you have to track your results. You know, cut off the things that aren't producing results and then continue to do more of things that are producing results. So um, yeah. that is a keystone of being successful and, and doing the right things. Yeah. So today we've covered more than this, but we've talked about shiny objects, analysis, paralysis, pruning, tracking. Um, so I got a fun way for us to end this show. So to our viewers and listeners, Chappie nor Scott, have got any idea as to what the final question is for the show. And so here we go. Uh, I'm going to say the, the person with the least hair gets the question first. So, <laughs> that, would uh, be so that would be Chappy. So uh, I'm like the iceberg, right? Like you don't see anything on top, but underneath there's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're, hey, Scott, you're not going to give us the uh, there's chimney, there's there's smoke in the chimney or something. What it is. I don't know how it goes. But anyway, uh, so Scott, you ready? I'm ready. What makes you unique? Whoa. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's a really good question. What makes me unique? I think one of the things that makes me unique is I I listen very closely and I'm very good at observing things. And then I take what I hear and what I observe and I'm able to come up with insights that uh, people either kind of know but but don't really get about themselves. And um, and I'm also able to communicate it in a way that doesn't normally make people defensive. So there's nothing worse than telling somebody, you know, you, you need to shave and then they get upset. So I'm able to tell most people you need to shave uh, and they're happy hearing it. <laughs> so I would kind of put it that way. Well, you know, I would agree with you. We've been working together for a while now and you are an excellent listener, which is very unique. Most people are not good listeners. In fact, Chaffee, at the live event last week, we actually had a breakout exercise on listening um, and how important that is when it comes to networking. We do a whole session on how to become a great networker uh, at the live event. Now, you see, Scott, so that's a writer downer, you know, learn to be a good listener. My advice on how to become a good listener is to just turn off your inner voice as to what you're going to say next or, you know, speaking of shiny objects, you know, and being a good listener, you know, what drives me nuts. What, what drives, drives you nuts, Jay? What drives me nuts <laughs> is I'll be talking with someone maybe for just a few seconds and they are, and we're, and we're in a social network. We're not one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's a social network or I'm at a conference or whatever. And I'll start talking. And in a few seconds, they have like, checked out they're like hello they're you know they're not listening because they're looking at the other people walking in the comfort room you know so um a friend of mine in a mastermind that i'm a member of um he makes it a practice it's unbelievable in fact scott we had him on my show uh patrick precourt oh, him what a great guy i mean when he's visiting with you you are the most important person in the world and he said, Jay, the reason they're the most important person in the world is because they are the only person that I'm thinking about while I'm visiting with. And, and stop worrying about what you're going to say next. Because, and that's what you do, Scott. You just, you're a great listener. So, yeah, now you see okay. Chaffee. Yes. So Chaffee thinks I'm going to ask him the same question. 
Well, see, I kind of checked out because I was thinking about what to say. Exactly. (laughs) And so since Chavi is thinking, I'm going to ask him the same question. (laughs) I am. Okay. (laughs) What makes you unique, Chavi? You know, Jay, uh, uh, you know, other than the birthmark that I have. (laughs) (laughs) uh, That that um, none of us have seen nor want to see. That's right. Uh, most people will tell me, and uh, when they meet me, that uh, they they never would have guessed that I'm an engineer. So I think I'm the most uh, non-engineer engineer that you'll find. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I can be extremely analytical, which you know, Jay. I can be very detailed oriented. Uh, yeah. On the flip side, you know, I enjoy hanging out with people. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy getting out there. And having fun, and you'll see me dancing in front of the room, which you know engineers aren't known to be doing a lot of. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. I, I agree. I agree. That's great. Yeah. Well, this is the longest podcast show we have done since we started this show, but I, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Scott, thank you for being on the show and parting comments. Well, thanks for having me, Jay and, and Chathios. It was exciting to be on this side and to, and to be able to contribute. And what I would suggest is start. So I went and I looked at Warren Buffett, tried to find the exact quote that you, you talked about earlier. Did not find it, but I found a kind of a reference to the, the similar idea. And what he tells people to do is make a list of 25 goals and then circle the five that are the most important break those five into uh, sub goals and start working on those five goals only. And then the other 20 items that you didn't pick, they become your do not do list. In other (laughs) words, they are a distraction from you achieving your five goals. Once those five goals are done, then you you continue the process. And I would suspect that when those five goals are done, those 20 goals shift a lot in terms of their importance. A lot of them probably drop off and you'll probably come up with a very different list of 25 new goals. But I thought that was really interesting. And, and of course, what you're talking about is, is focusing on what's really, really important. And a lot of the things that you're focusing on are costing you money. So don't do that. Yeah. And I'm glad you looked that up because that also reminds me of another uh, success habit that Warren Buffett does um, and has done for years. And I just recently read this over the last year or so. So as people are going throughout their or planning for their day, they'll have their checklist, they'll have their to-do list, they'll have their scheduled, you know, appointments and et cetera. But I've read that Warren Buffett does something very different than most other folks. He writes down on an index card what's the most important thing or goal he can do today. And he only allows one thing on the index card or the postcard, not postcard, the index card, three by five. So, yeah, he's high tech. He's still using a pen and index cards going in his pocket. What's the one thing that could be that he, he can do today? that will have the most impact, um, you know, on whatever he's trying to accomplish. Uh, Chaffee, thank you for being on the show. Parting comments. Yeah, it's, again, you know, there are so many different things that uh, we can talk about. And as a matter of fact, we can probably do a part three, four, and five of this uh, mindset thing here, Jay. (laughs) And, you know, I go back to uh, a couple things. Uh, Primarily is find a good person to work with. You know, obviously, Jay, I think you're a great person to work with. That's why I work with you. Find somebody to work with that's going to help you take you down that path um, to get you there. I think having a coach is the fastest, quickest way. A good coach, mind you, right, is the fastest, quickest way of getting where you want to go. And when things get too complicated and things get too blurry or, or too busy or, you know, too many branches, go back to the basics. That's one thing that we did in the mastermind. You know, always focus on the basics, focus on what you're looking for and focus on moving forward. So. Get a coach and focus on the basics. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, yes, no doubt. We're going to have some more sessions on uh, on this topic. And um, so, folks, again, get on over to www.jconnor. Got it right here on the 
video, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. Check out the upcoming live event we've got going on. And of course, for all you listeners on iTunes, be sure and subscribe, rate, and review so you don't miss out. And I always appreciate, always appreciate the reviews and the ratings. If you're watching us on YouTube, then uh, comment below, ask any question you got. And we'll make sure we get all these real estate investing questions answered. Uh, subscribe and share for sure. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Until next time, until the next show, here's to taking your real estate investing career to the next level. Bye for now.